Hi. Welcome. Lana told me to add everyone, so I did, despite the warning that told me off from adding everyone, so. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have lots of people join us. All right, let me just double check. Can you hear me? I set this up, but then didn't really. Okay, I do have audio, that's good. Good, good, good. Hooray. See and hear just fine. Perfect. Good. Um, let me see if I can get my light just a little bit better. Hello, welcome. How are you, Mikey? Finally, I can barely hear anything. I am on high flow oxygen. Okay, well, I, I'm sorry. Um, hopefully you can enjoy the uh, visual stuff. Finally started putting paint on paper again. That's good. That's good. Yeah.
I'm sorry to hear that you are uh, needing high flow oxygen, Mikey. Little lurking, but sending love, and the piece is looking beautiful. Thanks, Box. Of course, I wanted to finish this last week, but then I got uh, sidetracked by other projects. Totally unnecessary other projects. <laughs> Why do I do these things to myself? So I am um, one for four on the grants I applied to this cycle, which is very upsetting. But the one grant I did get is the uh, is a disability arts grant associated with this project. So this is going forward, um, and I just need to figure out how I'm going to fund the rest of my life. Uh, funding for the arts has taken a real hit uh, across Canada recently and locally so that's a it's a challenge for everyone
I can't believe this visitors. Uh... Okay, I'm not sure what... Sorry. What's up, Mikey? I don't... I'm not sure I understood that last bit. Um, you know what? I need to go wash off some, uh, get some fresh water and wash my palette. I will be right back.
Hello, hello! Sorry, one moment. I'm getting fresh water. I just got a new palette. I'm gonna go grab the other half of this that I left downstairs. So sad that last week I missed the notification. Yes, well, Lana says that I need to add everyone in my channel, so I did despite the Discord warning that I'm about to send a message to 70 people. Uh, so that's what I'm doing now. I may eventually make a separate f channel for that, but for now, I'm just gonna bother everyone. Uh, so if you are bothered by my weekly ad everyone, uh, then you can mute the channel, but just remember to come check. I'll be right back. How are you, Paolo? I am back to weekly streaming as well, so if you want to plan your weeks, it's 3.30 Eastern. I'm streaming every week. And I'm committing to it, so you can hold me to that. doing okay. Okay. Good. Or okay. What's uh what would make your life good rather than okay? Give some work to me. I need more work. Especially if it pays money, that's what I need. <laughs> it's the opposite of retirement. Ah, I need to unretire. I know I shouldn't complain. No, I mean, it's a valid complaint. I'm just, I'm just in a different spot. <laughs> I'm sure that if I was actually working 40 hours and getting paid, suddenly my, what would make my life better would be the ability to not do that. But, uh, right now I am, I mean, I'm working, it's just whether anybody is paying me for that work is very up in the air. <laughs> and the bills, the bills just keep coming.
That's also, I mean, the good news on my front is that I've had really bad chronic fatigue for years. Um, and something in the past couple months snapped and I feel like I've got a lot of my brain back that I didn't have for a few years, like starting with COVID. I, uh, I was just in a sort of fog for, for years, um, fighting chronic health issues, but just tired all the time and just like couldn't think straight so much of the time. And that has largely gone away. I, I mean, I'm still tired, I'm still sore, but, but my brain is back and I can do work and I can push through some amount of tired. I mean, I'm still trying to make sure I'm kind to myself and get plenty of sleep, but, um, Feels kind of magical. Also, I've been cooking like a maniac. Oh, what have you been cooking? stuff. Last week I made tortillas from scratch the, for the first time ever and they were really nice. That sounds amazing. Did you, did you use a press? Do you have a press? Sorry, my face keeps blocking my camera here. Let me rearrange myself. Also making a lot of fancy desserts. That sounds amazing. Destiny made me a chocolate tart the other week that was so good, so good. non breads. Ooh. I would love to make non. I actually, what I really want is to make a, like an outdoor clay oven. You see, this is why I need a different property, but it's not happening for several years. Relating to that, <laughs> the other thing I need is work. Um, I will not complain, I will just do something about it. So, I'll have a bunch of announcements about classes coming out, 
next week and paint palettes that you can purchase. Uh. Okay, this is really awkward because it's upside down and it feels really weird. So even though these are symmetrical, there's still a very clear bottom due to where the where I'm putting the cast shadows. And this feels wrong, but I didn't want to... I cook my nun in the iron, cast iron pan and they come out really nice. Yes, so I've done that for... I have a like a cast iron big stock pot and I've done that for making bread for making sourdough and it's really nice if you cook it in there and then you just take off the lid at the end it's like oh oh you get this really oh the crust on it oh interesting oh interesting classes and paint palettes yes 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 be interested be very interested custom paint palettes Custom paint palettes. Let me sneak preview a custom paint palette for you. So, um, I think some people have seen this already. It took me a while to get my act together and get organized, but they are ordered now. And they'll be arriving here soon. And then I can ship them out and they'll be here in time for me to run classes with them, which is really great. Um, I'll be doing online classes and in-person classes. Um, you do not need to buy my paint palette to take my classes, but I will give you a discount if you get my lovely custom paint palette. But look at all these pretty colors. Aren't they so pretty? Ooh. <laughs> it's beautiful. All you need is my paint palette and then you can paint like me. <laughs> Don't believe a lying word I say. Um, you don't, you absolutely do not need to buy my paint palette. It is for convenience because a lot of people want to use a specific paint that I demonstrate with and I find it really difficult because most of the time I have used a bunch of different brands, including a bunch that are not available everywhere. And so then when somebody asks me what paints to buy, I mean, generally, it's just use whatever you have, um, or, you know, I'll suggest one or two specific paints, um, but I always feel bad when people run out and spend hundreds of dollars on, uh, you know, trying to match my paints. Um, so I solved that problem, and I've worked with Roman Schmal to develop a, um, a custom palette of my choice um, and I will make that available to all of my students both online and in person at uh, a reasonable cost. Hi Lana! We're, uh, we're teasing this. See this beautiful thing? You know about this beautiful thing. This beautiful thing has is now on the way. Um, and next week I will have posts about buying it as well as online classes that I will be offering. So I'll be offering classes online and in person. Um, and we'll have discounts available for students to get palettes. Yes, finally, finally. I know it took so long. I. And it's, it's really all on me. Roman Schmal has been wonderful and has always gotten back to me super quickly, but it took me a while to decide on what I was getting. It took me a while to decide on colors. It took me a while to place my order. It took me a long while to finally pay for the finished uh, first set that's getting sent to me. So um, anyway, these are that I'm getting a, an initial edition of 
50 of these palettes plus some extra colors and um, yeah this is uh, the selection that's going to be available it looks like this and inside a inside a palette it looks uh, similar to this but um, this is not a Roman Schmal tin this is a Rosa Gallery tin because because I can't do anything uh, you know normally reliably uh, Do we each get our own hand-painted chart? You can get a printed chart, or you can pay me for a hand-painted chart, but uh, at the prices that I am selling these paint palettes at, I literally could not pay my time to... You get a really, really, really good deal on these paints. Um, and uh, the time to paint that chart was a lot. Thinking about customs. I'd like my custom chart to be slightly higher in value. Well then, I guess you are going to have to pay for that value, Stephen. <laughs> I mean, I am happy to, I am, I would be delighted to paint you a custom chart, but uh, that'll be charged at my regular rate. <laughs> So I can teach classes, or I can paint charts, or I can paint other things, all, all the same, all the same price. <laughs> you will probably get dinged on customs. Um, I am not quite sure how to avoid that. Now, you will get dinged on customs, however, you won't get pay you won't get charged VAT. You'll get dinged on customs instead of VAT. And so um Yeah. I think that's basically what it comes down to. Um they are Roman Schmal paints. You can buy Roman Schmal paints. They are more expensive open stock um, than... I mean, first of all, okay. So this is an especially good deal. It is an especially good deal for people in Canada because we get hosed on all paints. We have very few um, local manufacturers and they tend to be actually pretty expensive, the, the very, very, very few Canadian paint makers, um, which means that we get, we get hosed on import no matter what we buy, and then we have to pay local taxes if we buy locally, um, which means that our stores frequently have paints about three times the price that you would see the same paints on, say, Jackson's, um, excluding the VAT, and then on top of that, we then get charged uh, our sales tax, which is excise, so it's after, like, value plus tax, whereas um, if we buy from Europe or the UK, we don't pay VAT but then we do get hit with duties. Now, um, because this is a uh, business order, I've ordered through my tax-exempt account um, as a business, uh, which means I don't get charged VAT. I also don't get charged 
import, I have to charge HST to local customers. So local customers will have to pay 15% more. But on the other hand, they will not have to pay any import duties. I don't think I can get out of charging import on, on uh, things I mail out. Um, but it'll be just import, not that, if that makes sense. All right, see you soon, Lena. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, but regardless, I mean, it is, the truth is, uh, for the quality of paint, I think that Roman Schnall is in general just one of the best uh, valued paints generally, um, while keeping in line with other curated sets. Um, I am setting my retail prices to be reasonable and putting in a student discount. Um, this is a, I mean, primarily it's a convenience for me for teaching classes and for sharing with people and because I really wanted to have a paint set. Um, so I'm actually really glad, I'm really pleased that they'll be available. Um, quite affordably. Uh, and I think that even with import and all the, all the terrible things that come with buying paint, uh, it's still actually a reasonable price. And I've got some unique colors, but I think it's also a very usable set. Um, I'm sorry for all the teasing. This will all come out next week. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. No, turn this back here. also so happy this is going to be a thing it's it's one of those like you know you have your little dreams they're like it's not like this is a, a, a like a big uh, you know money maker big uh, you know name recognition thing uh, you know lots of people have uh, their curated sets it's not a but it like it's always been a thing that I've seen you know some artist I admire come out with their little set and like, oh, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to just have a set of paints that has my name on it that I can point to people like, just like, you know, this little like, you've made it. Uh, point, so I, I brought it up with Roman Schmal, not really expecting much and uh, I'm delighted that, that that's a, uh, that's a thing I can offer.
Anyway, I'm really excited to share it. I'm really excited for anyone who wants to buy it, to try it out. I really do stand by these paints, um, but I also just want to make it clear that it is not, like, you don't need this set to paint well, to enjoy my classes, to anything. It's, it's just paint. Um, but. but it's a fun thing. And I'm excited. What if I buy the set I won't be magically painting like you, totally disappointed in the palette. Yes, well I'm just I'm just uh you know honesty in advertising. <laughs> Paint skills come from painting and practice. They do. It's the unfortunate truth. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I can't sidestep practice for you. Damn, yeah. But here's, here's what I can tell you. If you buy the set and you use it up, like paint, keep painting with the whole set until you use it all the way up, I, I guarantee you will be a better painter at the end. That's the magic. You just have to use it all up. You have to make paintings with the whole thing. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> you just have to... <laughs> you know, that's the spell.
Are you still trying the casein paints? Uh, what's the last thing I did in casein? Let me see if I've got a decent casein experiment handy somewhere. This is a casein thing. This is, actually that's also a casein thing. So there you go, there's two casein things. The background isn't casein on that one, but. I'm actually trying to use them up because they've started drying on me. I also have gouache, so I'm, yeah. I've been mixing casein and gouache a little bit. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I've been doing, I did share on my channel, but I'll bring it up. I have Destiny downstairs putting away my seed packets in my nicely alphabetized seed binder that I don't keep on top of. Um, story of my life. Uh, so I am um, going to cover this up a little bit, uh, but there was a call for entry uh, for a... Uh, City of Waterloo thing, so I did a little streetscape um, urban sketch, but this was so tiny and I wanted to show what I could do with some fun colors and a bit of a looser style um, in watercolor. So then I did a couple of urban sketches uh, yesterday, you know, kind of kind of last minute. Um, Gotta, gotta be difficult, but uh, so then I did this, which is the view outside my studio window. There's a factory across the street. Um, this is the rubber compacting factory across the street. And then this is um, the town. We're in a, like a double city, like uh, two cities fused together. So the next town over um, has this little 
We're in Kitchener, Waterloo, which used to be, so Kitchener used to be Berlin, Ontario. Um, and we have a huge German population and the largest Oktoberfest outside of Germany. In fact, I think it might be the largest Oktoberfest festivities, like the largest Oktoberfest um, event outside of Munich. Anyway, it's certainly outside of Germany. Um, and uh, the, we have this little, it's the Oktoberfest Carillion. It, it, it's like a, a clock bell thing. It also plays songs. Um, it's real cute and sort of tucked away. And anyway, so I used uh, some in-person stuff and also some sketches or some, some photos to do this. Uh, so that was my yesterday. Um, and yeah, I've been doing a fair bit of painting on top of, you know, work stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I do really enjoy that style. And I think um, the interesting thing is like, in some ways it feels really different from my usual usual work, but it's it's less different than than you might think. Um, because a lot of it comes down to just skipping some of the steps. Like I I do actually tend to put down a lot of color and then add detail on top and then add more little colors. I tend to do this very blocky, very, um, you know, initial colorful thing that you can see here, um, with then working in detail sort of interweaved. So basically it's just a, a little bit less, um, care and planning on putting all the little lines exactly in the right spot, a little bit of exaggeration of shapes, but then also just skipping a lot of the in-between steps, um, just like shortening the whole process and you end up with this much more colorful, um, sort of impressionist, uh, playful take, um, which is really fun and it's really fun to break out of, like I feel like I can get really stuck into um, details and, you know, hunching over a, a, a thing at the studio and stressing about little things. And so it actually, it really helps my work to break out of that. Um, so I've really enjoyed urban sketching and playing with different, different styles, different materials, different ways of approaching that. And then the other other thing that I'm doing is a completely different medium, but I'm going to bring it up anyway because we're just sharing what's going on in my life. So then the other thing, and let me just make sure I'm not dipping into wet paint, because uh, that could go disastrously. Moment, let me just set that aside too. Uh, I also have, I've been, I've taken, so I've been, I've knit for years, um, but the last few years I really didn't touch any knitting. Um, and then recently I've realized that I need a fidget for when I don't have it in me to be painting. 
um, or I'm doing something else, I'm talking, I'm writing, I'm uh, watching TV, but my hands need to be doing something. So I've started this gigantic knitting project. <laughs> this is all sock yarn, and I'm making a uh, king size blanket. Um, so this is about, oh, like a tenth of the way done. Um, but I started out with just all the various sock yarns that I had in my stash. And then I got a few extra. Tonight I'm going to my in-laws and uh, stash diving in my mother-in-law's knitting stash. She's a much better, more accomplished knitter than I am. Um, and I'm really excited because she's got some really fun stuff in her stash. Uh, and then, yeah, um, this is going to be a giant, giant, fun, cozy blanket. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a 20 stitch spiral, so it starts in the middle here, and then it just goes around. And around, and around, and around. Um, and I started out actually really sloppy because I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I hadn't knit in several years, um, but it turns out I'm actually a really fast knitter once I get going, so... It sounds complicated and tricky to do. It is actually super simple. So I am going to demonstrate a little bit of what I'm doing here, because this is totally a knitting channel now. So, um... Uh, this is just, it's 20 stitches in a little, like, tiny little scarf shape. And then, so I just do those. Um, I am a continental combined knitter, uh, which, uh, you know, if we're just going to do the, like, I put everything on my channel, um, is a fun little knitting thing. I, uh, um, it doesn't, sh it doesn't really affect this because this is all knit stitches front and back, but if you are doing, um, a lot of knitting, if you look at a knit sweater, we'll have, um, something that looks like a braid at the front and something that looks more similar to this texture on the back side that is knit and purl stitches and the one is the reverse of the other basically um, it's which way around the stitch sits um, and most people if they're purling they always want most people have their stitches always sitting the same way on the needle um, but if you that in order to do that you need to if you're purling you need to wrap the stitch around the way I knit is a little different or the way I purl is a little different and then so then I twist my stitches uh, on the purl and then untwist them on the way back basically they I make a half turn on the needle depending on which way I'm knitting. Um, it means that I knit a lot faster. Just basically, I'm an extremely fast knitter for really how uh, much of a novice I am. Uh, I have, you know, I've knit a couple pairs of socks, a, a sweater, several scarves, but like not, you know, I am not a like, oh, I don't have, you know, dozens of shawls behind my, behind me. I, I've knit a few things, um, but I am a fast knitter just by virtue of the style of knitting I use. It makes reading patterns a little bit interesting, especially for things like lace where um, lace patterns, in order to create the shapes in lace, it depends on stitch orientation. So lace patterns will have instructions for twisting your stitches. 
um, and I have to translate patterns because my stitches aren't always facing the same direction that's expected um, on the needles. So the, the direct instructions about, okay, and now you pick up this stitch and turn it around to create a twisted stitch, uh, you know, that, that might end up turning it a turn and a half or uh, unturning it depending on what what my stitches are doing relative to what's expected. Um, anyway, uh, and I just, sorry, I just did the, the one little complicated bit here and didn't really demonstrate it, but I add in like a, every time I come back to here, I just tie it into this existing piece. Sitting and knitting with Lee. Yeah, I mean, sorry for anyone who was came here looking for painting and ended up with knitting. Uh, I will be back to painting in a moment. I am going to do this and try to remember to get to the, the joint and actually demonstrate the one thing that makes this not just the same stitch over and over and over again. Um, so actually this would be an extremely boring pattern but for the fact that I've got all sorts of different colors, so every time I start getting bored, I just switch colors. Um, and so then it, uh, it allows me to have like a little bit of amusement with looking at um, the different colors and how it's appearing. Also, my cat got into this yarn, so this is the last of one little ball of yarn, but the, the cat got into it, and so it is not a ball, it is a tangle. And luckily it's very little yarn left, so I'm just going to untangle it as best I can, but I apologize for this ridiculous tangle. Anyway, yeah, um, knitting. It's a fidget. I have ADHD. <laughs> it helps me sit through otherwise boring things that I would struggle with. Uh, keeps my hands busy. I've deliberately chosen a very, very long project that is very, very boring. So it, this is going to be a huge blanket. I'm knitting it with really thin yarn. Um, there's two reasons for that. The first one is, well, there's three reasons. The first one is it's what I had a lot of in my stash when I started and I didn't want to buy new stuff right away. Um, I just wanted to start, so I looked in my stash and I had plenty of sock yarn. So I started with sock yarn. Um, I also, it's also, uh, very affordable for the weight of wool. Um, basically, there's a lot of like relatively affordable sock yarns um, because socks are a thing that a lot of people knit in large volumes. Um, so heavier, thicker wools tend to be more expensive for the weight of wool even. Um, and then of course the same weight of wool in a thicker wool will produce less fabric and also produce less stitches. So I deliberately created a project that's, you know, even at my current rate, this would take over a year to finish. Um, and again, uh, I am Maybe not demonstrating it super well right now because I'm knitting and talking and trying to remember to not do the one slightly interesting thing in this knitting. <laughs> uh, without pointing it out. Um, but uh, I'm a fast knitter 
and I didn't want to spend a huge amount of money on this project and I wanted it to keep me busy for a long time. So uh, <laughs> so I, I deliberately chose the, the, this is the busy making way of making a blanket. Like if you actually want a blanket rather than a multi-year project, um, then you choose a heavier weight of wool and maybe don't make it king-sized. Uh, but I wanted the challenge. Anyway, I also, um, I like working with natural fibers. They tend to be more expensive than like acrylic yarn. Uh, okay, so here we get to the end of this, right? So I've made myself a little scarf, but it's detached from my main piece. This is my main piece here. And so then I'm gonna go into this stitch above here I'm going to make a new stitch and then I'm going to take the previous stitch and I'm going to throw it over that and that's that. Now I've joined that into the piece and now I can do two more rows. I'm back just in time for knitting. Yes, yeah, so um We've, uh, we've gone through the, like, what's keeping me busy right now, so I shared some, some artwork that I'm doing aside from, like, the main work work thing. I've got some pieces that I made. Um, I've been having fun with urban sketching. I mean, really, it was for an application, but, uh, this is outside my window, and this is... Uh, a little cute little thing downtown. Um, and then I also shared, yes, my gigantic, gigantic blanket. Um, yeah, making a king size blanket in sock weight yarn. Uh, because yes. So we'll see how long this takes. At my current rate, it should be just over a year. Uh, I suspect that I'm probably going to slow down substantially and get distracted by other projects at some point, and that this may well be the five or ten year project, but, um, it's lovely. I really like it. Tonight I'm going to my in-laws and digging in my mother-in-law's knitting stash. She is a much, much better, more accomplished knitter than I am, and she has an amazing stash, so I'm really excited about that. Back to painting. <laughs> Back to my actual job. Oh right, I'm not a knitting influencer. Haha. I don't know how to do like the virtual stitch and bitch, but uh, you know, that's also an option for at some point. If we want to do like a, you know, Discord hangout, because I know there's a bunch of fiber people. Looks great. I like the leftover yarn projects. When I finish my blanket one day, I want a leftover cardigan. Yes, yes. Um, now, unfortunately, I, I did have, you know, this started as a stash busting project, but um, from the start, it was pretty clear that I, I <laughs> my stash is not that big. Um, I've been actually really good about despite my hoarding paint and hoarding garden seeds and hoarding all sorts of things, um, my, my knitting stash has always been pretty contained. Um, and so uh, actually this has grown my stash because I very quickly ran through um, much of what I had in an existing stash. and uh, had to supplement.
I have several kilograms of sock yarn leftovers. Uh, well, you know, if you ever want to get rid of some sock yarn leftovers, have at me. Um, cause, uh, I think right now, and I'm, I've bought some extra, um, but I think right now I've got less than half of what I need to, uh, to finish this project. <laughs> I have, here's my sock yarn stash. I will bring it over cause I can do that. There's like two skeins that aren't in here, but like that's it. That's what I've got. Um, so I am gonna run out. Uh, yeah, definitely gonna run out. I mean, I'm gonna run out unless I go too crazy with, uh, you know, buying extra yarn for my scrap yarn blanket. But the other thing is, I'm like, I really do like these scrappy projects, and so I'm looking at this and I'm like, ah, uh, well, this is neat. I can I can start other projects that are also like made with these scraps, or I can, uh, like, I've there's a lot of like color work type projects that I've been curious about but like couldn't justify like what well, I'm gonna get like a bunch of different colors well now I can so because I'll just use as long as I get them that they I started to knit tiny toys to get rid of even more and the blanket it is about four times that. I knitted 13 pairs of socks last year and three dragons. Nice! Bye, Paolo! Good night! Yeah, I'm gonna be here for another maybe a half hour. Um, and then I need to Get ready to go to my in-laws. I've been looking at crocheting little toys. Um, man, okay, so I keep looking at like baby toys, but baby toys suck because babies don't really have, I mean, when they're very young they just, uh, they, mm -hmm. um, so really I keep looking at like toddler or like preschooler toys, you know, because I'm totally going to have a toddler or preschooler at home anytime in the next, oh, <laughs> five years. <laughs> uh, and I have, I have grand plans for like a whole pretend town <laughs> that I want to build in a playroom. Um, and I've looked at like, yeah, woodworking, like little like uh, wood play food things and, and crochet ones. Some of the nicest ones are like a combination where it's, it's a... Uh, you know, like a, a wood carrot with a with a crochet top. Oh, I've seen some really nice things. And there's a lot of like, oh, I could make that. And uh, honestly, baby clothes are great because they're so tiny, right? So it's like in the time that I could make like a pair of socks, it's like, oh, well, I've got you an entire outfit. Do I have Ravelry? I do. I haven't been very active on Ravelry, but if you're on Ravelry, I can, uh, I can up my game. <laughs> I 
there are lots of Baby clothes are amazing. They look so cute. Yeah, I know. So I want to do like a bunch of like stranded color work, like little, oh man, little teeny tiny. Oh, they're so cute. They're so cute. Um, so, uh, yeah. So that might generate some more yarn. But I'm also hoping between this blanket and I also have plans for a different one. I want to do the... Um, have you seen the beekeeper's quilt? I want to do that. I also want to do a hue shift afghan. But the... like not... Like the mixing chart mitered square blanket, but not the... I'm not using like the Knit Picks acrylic. I'll get real wool. Is your sock yarn also 75% wool, 25% nylon, and for 2.5 millimeter needles? Yes. Yep, that is exactly what I'm using. I mean, sorry, some of it is like 80-20, or has nylon, or, or nylon, or polyester, or whatever, but it's all superwash wool with some nylon or polyester for strength. Uh... Like mostly superwash wool, something, yeah. Uh, I use I use thicker wool for other things, but for for the uh, for for sock yarn, yes, that's I use the standard fingering weight, two point five millimeter needles. Superwash wool with something for strength. I can link you the toys my eight-year-old nieces love to play with. She even came to me to have one of them repaired. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes, I would love to. I do have some, uh, I do have nieces and a nephew who are getting to the age where they actually can play with real toys. <laughs> uh, no children of my own anywhere near that age, anywhere in the near future, but, uh, you know, baby, baby clothes, and then, and then toys for nieces and nephews, and studio mates kids. I'll put it into content. Okay, perfect. Great, thank you. Yeah, I do have some thicker wool that's not in that basket um, that I'm not going to use for this blanket, but that uh, I want to make the... Um, it's called the Hue Shift Afghan, but it's the, it's an, it's a... Um, it looks like a paint mixing chart, and it's just... it's mitered squares. Um, 
And I think the original is 10 colors. Um, and there's, I mean, you can buy the pattern, but it's a mitered square blanket. It's not like, there's no, no great need for a pattern here. Um, usually done in worsted weight, I think. Uh, and so I, I have, I've started collecting some wool for that. Um, and that's going to be, yeah, a heavier thing, but also, you know, can do that in a month or two, not, not years. Cause that'll go on like five millimeter needles at least. I understand. I do the same. When the pattern is obvious, I just knit. Yeah, I mean, I'm not great at, pat at following patterns of any kind or recipes or anything um, at all, but just, like, the, po the, the idea of, like, oh, I'm going to spend $7 for them to tell me to make a mitered square blanket. Like, I know how to make a mitered square. You just make a mitered square blanket, like it's not, you know, you can also get kits from Knit Picks that have 10 yarns, but they're all 10 or 11, because there's also a border, um, but they're all these acrylic things, like, nah, thank you, I will just buy my own yarn, and I'll make my own blanket, thank you for the inspiration. Um, yeah, other than, like, shaping or lace. I don't really need knitting patterns. Like if there's if there's some interesting shaping then yeah then 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 patterns are helpful. Um and then lace lace is interesting. Lana I brought this up when I pulled out the knitting was it you who's also a combination knitter? Continental combined? Do you flip your... Um, your purl stitches on the needle? Yes! Okay, yeah! That makes two of us, and it's like, it's so rare that I run into someone else who knits the same way. I thought I remembered that, yeah. Um, when, okay, I'm going to pull up my knitting again. This is all knit stitches, so it doesn't, uh... So it doesn't usually show up on this, but I can I can fake it for a moment. Sorry everyone who's just here for the painting and is getting subjected to my knitting nerding with uh <laughs> I learned the term for it from you. Okay, so when you purl so when you knit, I assume you do the same thing, you go through the front of the stitch, you pick your stitch, it comes out here, right? So this is a knit stitch. Now, in when most people purl, they do this where they have to wrap the stitch around and then they come out and the stitch sits the same direction on the needle. Can you see that? Here, if I zoom in. Sorry. Let me go. I'll go to OBS so I can see this properly. Okay, if I... Um, oh, 
sorry about my nails. Okay, here. How it's sitting on the same way on the needle. Now when I purl, I don't do, instead of doing this wrapping thing, I just pick. So you can see these two stitches, they're facing opposite ways on the needle, like the back of the the back of the loop is further this way. Um, so then I just correct that by knitting through whichever end of the stitch is forward on the return. Um, but that is, as it turns out, apparently uncommon. I don't do wraps. Yeah, okay. I can double check with, uh, I mean, I can do this again with some thicker, with some thicker needles. Um, it's, <laughs> I didn't realize it was at all different because I learned to knit from my mom who learned to knit from her mom and my great aunt who learned, who taught themselves to knit from watching uh, some lady in a refugee camp in the Second World War. Um, and so they have, they, they knit this way and I didn't realize it was at all weird and I'd never tried lace until I spoke to my mother-in-law who looked at my knitting and just kind of freaked out, like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, and then, and then I had to do some quick research and like, you know, ask my mom and my mom didn't know, asked my aunt and my aunt said, yes, I do know when I, when, when I borrow knitting, like when I help someone else knit and, uh, or when somebody tries to look at my knitting, I have to reorient all the stitches so they know what they're looking at. Um, but I didn't really, she didn't really know there was a name for it. She just knew that's how she knits. Um, it, it really doesn't come up unless you're showing someone else, like unless someone else is looking at your knitting, or, uh, or if, or if you try to follow lace patterns, because lace patterns are all dependent on, like, the orientation of the stitch. So if your stitches are all facing this way on the needle, that's what the lace, uh, or sorry, yeah, the, sorry, the lace patterns assume that no matter what, all your stitches are going to be facing this way on the needle. And if you have stitches that, depending on whether it was a knit or purl stitch, they're facing whatever on the needle, then you have to adjust the, you need to translate the lace pattern, basically. I knit lace and you have to switch knit two together and slip slip knit, I think. Right leaning decrease and left leaning decrease, which I find much easier to read. Yes, yes, so you sometimes have to switch knit two together and slip slip knit unless the stitch underneath is, unless the stitch underneath was a knit. So if you have knits on the, if your back side is all purls, then it's just a straight switch. If it's not, then it depends on the uh, orientation of the 
stitches beneath and I find to follow lace patterns I need to do like a little patch and try a few things until I figure out what they mean because the, the words don't match and then and then yes like and then and then it's just a ch like change a few things on patterns but otherwise it's it all comes out the same and it's a much faster way to knit <laughs> um so yeah uh I'm very happy with you know what I actually liked it there I'm gonna put it back So weird to see. Yes, I mean, and the number of people who like, oh, well, I can't, I don't want to, like, people hate doing um, moss stitch because, oh, you have to do a purl every second. You have to count the whole time. Like, no, you don't. I just go by feel, right? So not only is it easier to do the purls on, like, a moss stitch, but I always know the, the, the way the next stitch is going to go based on the orientation of the stitch underneath. Um, so I don't have to keep track. It, it is, honestly, I feel like it's just a, in so many ways, just a, like a friendlier or nicer way of knitting. But I've had a few people ask me to teach them. I'm like, okay, yes, but <laughs> do you want me to teach you the regular way or my family's weird way? Because my family's weird way is better. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited because, yeah, I was just, I was just remembering, like, oh, I'm going to go to my mother-in-law's and she's always, like, she's a, in so many ways a much, much, much more skilled knitter than I am. But she was, and once, once I figured out, oh, no, I'm just knitting... There's a, there's a term for this, it's continental combined, and I showed it to her. She said, oh yeah, okay, I do have like one or two friends who, who, who knit that way. I had read about that, but like, um, initially she was just like looking at my knitting and like, this doesn't make sense. How do you, whatever, are you twisting your stitches? Is everything backwards? Like, no. Anyway, it's exciting to find someone halfway around the world who uh, knits the same way, weird way I do. <laughs> what do they count? To one? Okay, um, oh, man. You know what? I'm gonna go get some thicker yarn and, uh, and a, uh, <laughs> and the needle so I can <laughs> do this. Whatever they want and one started with socks. It went very well with knit two, purl two right away. Yeah, um, okay, I will, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. <laughs>
normal size knitting needles feel absurd uh, when you're doing tiny, tiny things. Okay, I'm going to cast on and then do a little demonstration of the things that people complain about. Oh my goodness, these do feel so absurd. I think they're also a little bit thicker than, they, than I really need for this yarn. Uh, yeah, but whatever, it's fine. It'll do. Uh, what am I doing? I don't know, some number of stitches. Sure. Okay, so if I'm knitting on these and I, um, so if I do, I knit one and then I purl one and then I knit one, and, actually, sorry, and then I purl one the regular way. Oop. Pearl one, the normal people way, where they do things weird and they wrap them around and then I knit one and then I purl one with this weird thing and then I knit one. I mean, then there's, then there's people who literally wrap, you know, tuck their needle behind their arm and wrap like my mother-in-law, uh, which that really throws me. Um, but uh, Okay, so here, there. If I knit these like a, like a normal person, um, like a regular continental knitter. So all of my stitches are facing the same way. Now, now if I go to do a seed stitch or a ribbing, right? Like say I want to do, say I want to do a seed stitch. Now if I, if I'm doing a seed stitch because everything is facing the same way now it's like I need to I need to always look at like oh what's underneath oh okay this is a knit so now I purl on top and this is a purl so now I knit on top and this is oh this is a knit so now I purl on top so I need to either count or keep looking at my stitches and yes it is count to one <laughs> or two but it's not uh, you know, it's not mindless because I have to keep looking at what the stitch is underneath. Um, I can't just go by feel because the feel is the same regardless of what is underneath. Right? Does that make sense? Whereas if I go and So again, like all the needle, all the stitches facing the same way on the needle. Now, if I go and knit, continue this seed stitch, my own seed or moss stitch or whatever, single moss stitch, so seed stitch. Um, if I go and see, now I have to look like, oh, that's a purl underneath. Okay, so now I knit and I purl. And I'm gonna now I'm purling my own way, my my regular way, my combined way. Um, feels so weird. I mean these 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 needles are actually big for. Um, what I've got here, I think, but still, it feels weird. Okay.
So now I've done this my way and you can see like this stitch is facing this way, this stitch is facing this way, this stitch is facing this way, this stitch is facing this way. Like they're they're sort of it's close, but the the stitch orientation does change. Right? Like this one is this way, this one's this way, this one's this way. Like which side of the stitch is ahead. You just use the... Yes, I just use the leg that's first, but if you knit without... So if you don't switch the orientation, then... And you're doing seed stitch, then you, then you have to look at the stitch or count to know whether you're on a knit or purl. Seed stitch, ribbing, whatever. But because... Because I already know, like, oh, okay, anything that the, the back leg is first is going to be a purl now for me. Anything that the front leg is first is going to be a knit for me. Like, here I am looking at the camera. Hi, I can still do this without looking at what I'm doing because I can feel which side of the stitch is first and go that way. Um... Do I knit the last and first stitch in a row, like in a purl row, knit the, knit the last and first stitch just to, to create an edge? Generally not, unless it's, uh, like, unless I'm following some instructions that tell me to, but, uh, like, I'm familiar with the concept. Yes, knitting is super mindless for me. I do it while watching TV. This is why I don't, I mean, part of the reason, I guess, probably why I don't do a huge amount of lace. Because if I wanted to do lace, I, like, it's not, I could just translate the patterns. It's not difficult, right? It's not an extra challenge. It's just, like, right at the beginning, looking at the pattern, like, oh, where it says slip, slip, knit, it actually means whatever. I knit the last and slip the first. I I generally don't. I generally just just you know treat the first and last stitches as I would anything else. Um, but I posted to the knitting reddit and half the posts are about twisted stitches. Yes, which is hilarious, right? Cuz cuz yes, if you if you knit combined, it's like what do you mean twisted stitches? Uh you know, you twist stitches only if you are deliberately twisting stitches. Like if you you know, I would have to think about like, oh, I want to twist this stitch. I guess if I want to twist this stitch, then I'm going to take here and I'm going to go somehow like <laughs> Yeah, it's not a, doesn't happen by accident, um, but, uh, but for other people it does. Anyway, yes, uh, I think it's really neat that, uh, I've got a cool, more efficient way of knitting that I just, I learned from my family and they didn't even know it was different. Um, and you, you learned from your mom, right? It's interesting, I think, it's gotta be regional, but it's like, where is that regional pocket? Where's your mom from? 
she Russian? What have I done to this? Okay, that's not a twisted stitch, that's a... Here we go. Tiberia. Interesting. Yes, I don't... From Siberia, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, I mean, somewhere in there. So, so my, my grandmother and my great aunt learned to knit, but they taught themselves watching a, a woman knitting when they were in the Second World War, they were in Czechoslovakia, um, in a refugee, a filtration camp, um, escaping the Soviet Union there originally from Ukraine. Uh, but I don't know where that woman was from, other than she was taking the same route. So, I mean, I guess Siberia is possible, but seems further afield. She would have had to take a longer trip. Around a Katarinberg, or however it is written in English. It's possible, technically. Um, learn from my grandmother. Also have that orange twisty. I mean, it's also possible, like, because my my aunt and grandmother just sort of, like, learned from watching, like, apparently they weren't taught at all. They just, like, watched this woman knitting and, you know, found some, found some thread somewhere and some string and played with it until they figured something out. So they taught themselves to knit. So it is possible that that, that is just, like, what they came up with. Um, they, they're not certain that, you know, that is exactly how that woman was knitting. But I, I, I am aware that it's a, like, it's apparently a, like a fairly rare thing. And it's like, you know, there's maybe some regional stuff. It's really hard to tell, like, even finding any kind of documentation about who knits this, this, Strange way that I knit. Strange, it doesn't feel strange, but like just, you know, uncommon. Maybe they also did what was comfortable. Yeah, so like it is possible that, you know, uh, that the, the lady that they were watching was, was, stand, was knitting in like standard continental and that, you know, because they were making up their own thing and just testing, they, they ended up chancing on a different way. But then I also just wonder, like, you know, knowing nothing about, about this, this woman who they learned watching from, like, is this, uh, like, okay, this is a regional thing, but a region, like, which region? Because it's not, not necessarily the region they came from, right? They were in a... Yeah, that's fun. It seems like Siberia might be a little bit, a little bit further afield. Um, I don't know how many people really made it all the way to Czechoslovakia from Siberia. I am 
understanding was it was mostly Ukrainians and Poles there. I'm out of frame. Yes, I am. Sorry. Uh, here we go. Let's bring me back in frame. I think people would write down patterns, but not how they actually hold needles, etc., because it was taught through family. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's part of it, is, like, there's a there's a knitting community now who shares, like, you know, the, the rivalry and, and who shares knitting advice and, and has, you know, words to describe how different people hold their yarn and their needles and whatever, and that, that just wasn't a thing until relatively recently. Um, so... And even now, like, well, I mean, I'm on English-speaking media, maybe French, right? But I'm not... I'm not on, on Russian knitting forums, so I don't know. Could be way more common than... I was just like, I had only just started knitting. I mean, I'd been taught, like my... I think my aunt tried to teach me at one point and then it didn't really take. My mom tried to teach me at one point and it didn't really take. And then it's eventually I started knitting. And you know, my mother-in-law by this point, I, I was already dating my husband. My mother-in-law was so excited that, oh, you're knitting, whatever. Let's see what you're doing. Let's see what you're working on. And she looked at my stitches and was like, what are you? <laughs> what is going on here? Dante has a weird playful time, but it's bedtime, almost midnight, and he's jumping like a crazy puppy. They're funny when they do that. My... My cat has... He, he plays with Ember, and so he chases her around, and sometimes they'll have these like crazy zoomies at random hours. And it's all the cat's doing. Okay, what time is it? I need to go. I'm actually, I'm due at my mother-in-law's. So, also, uh, YouTube is telling me that it's buffering. So, I'm going to say bye now. Um, and, uh, step up. I very first when I was seven, but actually started knitting for real when I was 20. Yeah, I was 20-ish when I started, like, I... I'd been taught a couple of times, but I I started knitting, yeah, in, in, I was like 20 or 23 or something. Um, anyway, I will see you later. Um, I'll check out those, those links. I'll post some stuff on Ravelry. And, uh, yeah, and hopefully... Next week, maybe I'll do the silver leafing for this, or maybe I'll do that as a video. In any case, next week I've got a whole bunch of stuff slated to come out. Um, so, big excitement. Uh, yeah. Bye!